All right. Um, looking at some of the developmental stages of what's going on, uh, if you turn to page uh, 67 in your lab guide, um, you'll see a, stuff, a bunch of stuff about the pregnant rat dissection. Um, your teachers will tell you what you need to know on there. Um, but everybody needs to know this bottom part of it called the embryo developmental models. So what happens is you start out with a um, egg that has not been fertilized. Um, this is just an, an ovum. And you can see this little tail right here. That's the tail of a sperm trying to break through this layer of uh, tissue around the egg. And then you've got this clear kind of white colored tissue here. That's the zone of pellucida, which kind of protects the egg. Well, as soon as one sperm breaks through that zone of pellucida, you're going to get some immediate changes that happen with the egg. The, you're going to get the release of zona inhibiting protein, which is going to cause the zona pellucida to harden. It's also going to cause the carbohydrate receptors that um, allow the sperm to attack this egg to fall off. And so basically it prevents uh, polyspermy or multiple sperm from fertilizing this egg. So now you have a hard zone of pellucidum and you still don't have the nucleus of the sperm merging with the nucleus of the egg yet. So it's, the sperm is just broken through the zone of pellucidum, but there has to be a merger of the two nuclei to have fertilization. So these next models here just show what's going on. Um, the egg or the ovum was left in a state that it had not completed that second meiotic division. So you can see the second meiotic division of the nucleus of the ovum starting to complete there. And then you see the sperm nucleus uh, trying to move and join closer together. Then in this next model, and they've labeled it cute pink and blue for boy and girl, uh, the sperm and the uh, egg nuclei are starting to join together and join that nuclear material. You've got the same thing going on in here. Um, and then immediately when they start joining, you're going to start getting, I don't have my zygote, which is just a model that just shows um, the egg has been fertilized here. That's when the fertilized egg occurs. That's called the zygote. But the zygote is immediately going to start uh, reproducing, or not reproducing, but dividing. And so you can see that this zygote has already formed two separate cells here. So this is going to be an immediate thing once the sperm and egg nuclei join they're going to start uh, developing. Notice though that the size change, there's no big size change or no big volume change here. Um, and the reason is that all of this is occurring in that outer third of the fallopian tube. Well, you don't want this thing to start growing and dividing and getting bigger and then try to move through the fallopian tube towards the uterus. So you maintain your volume, but you are making more and more eggs here, or excuse me, more and more cells here. So when this uh, zygote starts to divide, you call this stage where you're making more and more cells, just a solid ball of cells, the morula stage. So you can see you now have gone to four different cells here. Then you'll go to eight and 16 and so forth. So as long as you have a solid ball of cells, you call that the morula. The morula is not going to have a volume change because it's got to get from the fallopian tubes down into the uterus. Eventually, the morula, though, is going to start um, causing, there's, there's going to be a collection of sodium dumped onto the inside of these morula cells, and that's going to attract water, because remember, water follows sodium, and that's going to start forming a cavity. So you're going to get a cavity start forming in here, and once you get a cavity or an empty space on the inside, you're going to call this thing a blastula. So think about like a tennis ball. A tennis ball has got this kind of hard shell, and then it's an empty space on the middle. Um, that's basically what a blastula is. So all of these cells from the morula start pushing out to the outside and form that tennis ball, and then you're going to have this fluid-filled cavity on the inside, and that's what you call the blastula. Now, the blastula, as long as you've got a hollow ball of cells here, um, you call that a blastula. Eventually, you're going to get a mass of cells start dropping down into this ball, and that's what's shown here. And that's going to be the beginnings of what's known as the inner cell mass. The inner cell mass is what's actually going to develop into the embryo. So when those, this hollow ball of cells like that starts pushing down and forming a, a mass of cells coming down into that 
fluid filled cavity. That's the beginnings of the inner cell mass, which is the beginning of the embryo. Um, and you can just see this uh, starting to form in different areas. So you've got the inner cell mass here is going to start differentiating into different layers as well. You've got the formation of the yolk sac. Um, you also have the outer cells of those, um, these, these outer cells right here, these are known as trophoblast cells. And these trophoblast cells will actually start forming little finger-like projections that you see coming out here. And those finger-like projections will eventually get more and more pushed out, and that's what forms the placenta. And your teacher will discuss all that in lab, but the, the finger-like projections of these trophoblast cells that are on those, those outer cells of the uh, blastula, those will form uh, into the placenta, which is going to be the organ that uh, both uh, feeds the uh, developing fetus and gets rid of the waste. Um, once the uh, inner cell mass starts differentiating into three separate layers, then you say that gastrulation has occurred, and so you would call this like the gastrula stage, because you can see the three distinct layers forming here. Um, we're not going to get too hung up on the different layers in there. Um, you, you've got your uh, yolk sac and then your amnion, which is going to be this cavity of fluid that's eventually going to wrap around and envelop uh, the baby. So you can see in this one that the ambion, amnion is actually starting to envelop and this is going to kind of go all the way around and that's going to form your amnionic sac or your bag of water. So when somebody says, oh my water broke, that's that protective bag of water that surrounds the developing embryo there. And then there's your yolk sac. Uh, your yolk sac is eventually going to kind of uh, push out and form part of the umbilical cord. Um, so that's a little, not quite as important in humans as it would be, say, a chicken or something like that. Um, as the uh, uh, embryo develops, you'll see that the amnion comes completely around the uh, developing embryo. So you've got your embryo in there, and then it's got the amnionic sac surrounding that. Um, on this model here, you can see it a little bit better. So now you've got your developing fetus in here, and it's backwards there and it's actually connected to the placenta. Remember those finger-like projections? They go out and form the placenta, um, but the fetus is connected to the placenta through the umbilical cord. So it's sitting inside the amnionic cavity there, which is filled with amnionic fluid. There's your fetus, that's the umbilical cord, and then of course this brown right here is the placenta. Notice the placenta is dug into this very inner layer of the uterus. That's your whole uterus right here. That inner layer is that endometrial layer. That's where the, this whole thing implants. Then you've still got your muscular layer out here, which is going to start contractions around the ninth month, and they'll start eventually pushing the baby down and out through this cervix, and then down through the vagina. So when it comes time for delivery, the baby will get into a, a head first position, and my fingers are in the way, so it'll get into this head first position, and the cervix will start to efface and dilate, which means effacement means it thins out, and dilate means it um, opens up. Oops, sorry about that, baby. Um, but basically, this is normally about, the, the cervical opening is normally about the size of a pencil lead. That's eventually going to open up to 10 centimeters, which is roughly about 4 inches so that the baby can come down through the cervix and then out through the vagina and then out into the world. Um, when it comes out, it's going to carry with it. Um, it's going to still be attached to the placenta. So you have that uh, final stage of delivery where you're going to have to deliver the placenta. You don't want to leave that up inside of the uterus or that could cause infections. So that's that.